Hello and welcome to another edition of Claremont Calling. And in this one, um, as we've been hoping, we're hearing from our congregation's missionary partner, Gary Bruff. Now, Gary and his family were supposed to be over in Scotland um, from Malawi, where, they've, um, where they're working. They were supposed to be over in Scotland on, on furlough. Um, and in fact, Gary was due to be taking the evening service at Claremont on the, I think the 19th of April or, or some such date. However, lockdown COVID um, affected Malawi as well. And Gary and family were told by the Church of Scotland to come home um, immediately and indefinitely really, or until further notice. So it's been a complicated and a frustrating time for Gary and his family. And um, in, in the clip that we're going to see, we're going to hear a bit more about his work. And I encourage you to um, let that help and inform and, and shape your prayers, remembering that we are part of a worldwide church, remembering that we do, through prayer, have the opportunity and the privilege of really participating in and, and sharing with the ministry of brothers and sisters throughout the world. Um, as well as that, just a couple of things I want to uh, mention. One is that in the past days, there, this past week, there's been huge changes in terms of the messages coming out um, from the government about what's going to be allowed and when it's going to be allowed. Um, we have had some discussion with that at the congregation, at the congregational board meeting, and the Kurt session are meeting next uh, Wednesday night. So when Claremont Calling comes out next week, I'll give a much fuller indication of what our plans and um, anticipations are in terms of when we will meet again and how. At the moment, the only permission given uh, that applies is that churches can be open for personal and private prayer. We've decided not to be doing that. It's not simply a matter of just opening the door and letting folks come and go as they want. There's all kinds of restrict, all kinds of regulations about cleaning and access and, and stewarding, even, even in those situations. But more, God is everywhere. God is everywhere in all his fullness. And for any Christian and for every Christian, we have access to the throne of God himself through Jesus, no matter where we are. So it's not that we don't want folks to be praying. We do. It's not that we don't want to encourage personal prayer. We do. Get on and do it wherever you are, whenever you can. There are no restrictions, and God is always open. God is always available, and God is always hearing. The other thing I, I want to mention, and it's been um, featured in uh, an earlier Songs in Chasha and one or two other places, is a bit of shameless promotion here, but uh, my wife Karen, Karen Palmer, has um, just written a book, um, Jennifer, A uh, Precious Life to, to God. It's the story of a first child who, who lived um, for five hours on a day back in August, and Karen had long wanted to write a book of reflections and reminisces. And we trust that it will be um, both a testimony to God's goodness, um, but also um, of help to folks who are or have been or knowing others going through any kinds of suffering, but particularly um, with reference to the loss of a child. Now, we're going to, uh, the book is officially um, released in the middle of July, but we have copies and we're going to have a, um, an open, uh, come and get your copy if you wish, here at Claremont on Friday the 3rd of July. So Friday the 3rd of July, between 10 and 12. Just to be clear, there will be no access to the church buildings. We will be setting up a table facing the car park where there will be books, and if anybody wants Karen to, to sign a copy, she'll, she'll do that happily. Um, and we ask folks, if you want to come, then do come and keep social distancing. You might want to know how much it costs. Not surprised. Well, the book's going to be retailing um, at nine pounds, but we're selling copies for seven. Uh, so it's seven pounds, and just to say that one uh, pound of that is going to a, a charity that supports to supports work with um, children who have not lived very long or parents who have um, diagnoses of difficult um, pregnancies. So a pound to, to charity. Um, the charge is seven pounds, um, and we'll be here from ten o'clock in the morning till twelve noon. And you'll come just outside the church building, Friday the third of July. Um, for those who um, want to receive a copy um, without having to come anywhere like, like Claremont, then do send me an email at minister at 
clermontparishchurch.co.uk. Um, we can post copies out. There will be a postage charge, of course, on top of the uh, £7 for, for doing that. But if folks um, email me at minister at clermontparishchurch.co.uk, um, saying that they want one or two or however many copies, then um, I'll arrange for that to, to happen as well. Thank you. Maniri Mossi, and greetings to all of you at Claremont Parish Church. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Gary Bruff, and I'm your mission partner through the Church of Scotland. Um, and I'm serving currently in Malawi, though not in Malawi just now. And I'd like to give you a bit of an update on some things that have happened over the year and a, a half almost that we were there as a family. Um, and then to think a little bit about how things are now and and the best way probably to help you understand the work that I am supporting there and also the reality of life in Malawi is probably to share the story of Eliza. Eliza has a real head for business and along with her husband, who is a, an electrician, they built together not just a, an electrician's business, but an electrical, electrical contracting company. But sadly, her husband took another wife not legal, but still quite common in Malawi today, even in cities like Mizuzu. Um, he took another wife and he left the family home and left the business and things started to fall apart. As a result, income dropped, the business closed, they had to get rid of the house that they had and Eliza was forced to move with her teenage daughter into um cheaper accommodation in a difficult part of Mizuzu to live. Eliza loved her husband um, and he would still come to call and when he stayed over one time she uh, lifted his cl clothes to, to take them to launder and found a, a bottle of tablets inside and from that she learned that her husband was HIV positive. She was terrified and she went to the hospital. Thankfully her daughter is HIV negative, but Eliza sadly was HIV positive. Her husband had brought that disease into her house. It was when she was at the hospital that she met um, some of our paralegal team who support women who've been victims of gender-based violence. The team met with her, counseled her, prayed with her, and after a while, they have helped her to set up a new business of her own, selling rice. This business has been successful. It is growing. She was to pay back the loan in around about six months and paid it back in half the time, taking a further small uh, business startup loan from our department to grow her business even further. The practical financial support is only part of it. She meets along with other women who have been victims of gender-based violence together they support one another and encourage one another in life and in their businesses. For women like Eliza, the possibility of finding justice um, for what her husband had done to her is, is very difficult, even at the, the best of times. But without financial independence, it would be close to impossible. Having this small income through the small business that she set up gives her financial security for herself, for her daughter, but also it gives her a chance at being able to afford to work her way through the process of finding justice in court also and holding her husband accountable for his responsibilities to their family. We see over and over that addressing gender-based violence and the empowerment of women are two strategies that go hand in hand, not just to improving the lives of women, but to improving whole communities. Projects like these are, are so important, um, but the environment in which they are operating now is so much more challenging as a result of coronavirus. Concern about coronavirus in Malawi is growing slowly as the number of cases increase. Um, it's sitting around about 900 this week with 11 confirmed deaths. So still a small number, 
on the global scale. But in many ways, Malawi is at the very start of the curve and we're seeing that number growing at an increasing rate week to week. Schools have remained closed without the support structures that we have in place here um, to support families to homeschool. At the same time, the cost of some food, staple foods like maize um, has risen. Um, that we're around about the harvest time of year now, so some of those are, are becoming more affordable. But Malawians are really feeling um, the education and the financial squeeze of coronavirus, probably in a bigger way than um, the number of positive cases. Related to this, and it's something we've seen in the UK, um, is a increased domestic pressure leads to increased cases of, of gender-based violence. Right now, the hospital-based gender-based violence program that supported ELISA isn't operating because the room is being used for coronavirus testing. Tackling coronavirus is, is essential, but at the same time, Malawi faces the challenge of how does it address some of the ongoing crises and emergencies and difficult situations that the country faced before, many of which have just become worse as a result of coronavirus. The route, the route out of the pandemic is likely to be slower and harder for countries like Malawi. But at the same time, we can't um, be like those who are without hope. We continue to pray for Malawi as a nation. And also we have practical reasons to have hope as well. Malawi has first-hand experience from the um, HIV epidemic. And at the same time, its neighbours have the experience of dealing with Ebola. So there are reasons to believe that, that Malawi, with, um, with the right government and the right attitude, um, can address the challenge of coronavirus. Um, in the meantime, thanks so much for your prayerful support. We look forward to seeing you. And until then, stay safe. Thank you.